Hey everyone, today we are going to test and compare two new 16-inch laptops by Gigabyte, which in today's tested configurations both sport the new RTX 5070 Mobile with 8GB of GDDR7 VRAM. First we have the Gigabyte Gaming A16, which is kinda Gigabyte's budget gaming series. And second the Gigabyte Aero X16, which is a bit more focused on creators and content creators. So if you're planning on getting one of these and can't decide which one to get, I hope you'll be able to answer that question today. Both samples have been sent to me by Gigabyte and will be sent back after the test. No money was involved, I was not obliged to make a review and Gigabyte didn't see the video before you guys. So as just mentioned, both units here use the RTX 5070 mobile, but Gigabyte chose to use a version with a maximum TGP of only 85 watt, including dynamic boost, meaning the GPU in here is not given its maximum potential. And in reality, it's not using the 85 watt in most scenarios. So it's important to keep that in mind. For all the video footage and the tables in today's video, the Gaming A16 will be on your left side and the Aero X16 will be on your right side. The Gaming A16 comes with a pretty old i7-13620H with 6 performance and 4 e-cores, while the performance cores support hyperthreading. I assume that's a decision to bring down the budget or the price. While it's not necessarily a bad CPU, it's starting to show its age since it was launched in the beginning of 2023, which was like 900 days ago. The Arrow X16 on the other hand sports the newer AMD Ryzen AI7-350, a much more recent Zen 5 chip with 8 cores and 16 threads. For the RAM, the Gaming A16 only comes with one single stick of 16GB DDR5 5200MB transfers, which can be upgraded, and the Aero X16 in this configuration sports 32GB of DDR5 5600MB transfer per second with two sticks of 16GB, while both support up to 64GB. The two laptops are using the same pretty fast 1TB Kingston M.2 NVMe SSD with reading speeds of around 4GB per second and writing speeds of 3.5GB per second, while it's able to achieve slightly better scores in the AS SSD benchmark for the Aero X16. But overall, read and write speeds are basically identical. And there is a second M.2 slot available. Both laptops use a 2560 by 1600 p IPS display with 164Hz and adaptive sync. Both displays seem to be pretty similar considering the color accuracy. Overall, they are decent. While surprisingly, the Gaming A16 had a slightly brighter display with around 452 compared to 403 nits in the Aero X16, but on the other hand, it seems to suffer from pretty bad backlight bleeding in the lower corners and the bottom edge for my review unit. According to Gigabyte, both have a fast response time of 3 milliseconds and both of the laptops actually do have a MUX switch. Overall, they are decent screens, while I expected the Aero X16 to have a better screen with the target group of creatives in mind. Both laptops use the same 150 watt AC charger with a pretty thin proprietary pin, so you better don't accidentally pull sideways on that cable while it's plugged in. Also, the two laptops sport a Wi-Fi 6E connection and Bluetooth 5.2, as well as an identical 76.1 watt hour battery. And each of them comes with Windows 11 Home pre-installed. The speakers in both laptops also seem to be an identical pair of 2 watt speakers with an okay quality and loudness. Nothing special, but not bad overall. Quite usable. I mean, it could be a bit louder and more powerful though. Interestingly, and that was quite a surprise to me in terms of build quality, I would kind of put my bets on the Gaming A16, which seems to be more sturdy and stable overall, starting with the bending of the screen, which is more noticeable um, for the arrow. The flex of the keyboard, again, much more evident on the arrow. And the hinge of the Gaming A16 just seems a bit more trustworthy, since it's connected on two sides, while here it's only connected on one side. Most likely that's because the Aero X16 is a bit thinner, a bit lighter and slightly smaller overall, but Gigabyte didn't seem to have worked against that with stronger materials. 
The Gaming A16 weighs around 2.2 kg, while the Aero is a bit lighter with 1.9 kg. And it's also around 2 to 3 mm thinner with its 16 mm thickness. By the way, the two laptops use slightly different plastic materials for the chassis and the Aero X16 is also available with a white display lid instead of a black one. Opening them with one hand works. While the gaming A16 can be opened by 180 degrees, the Aero X16 cannot do that. This is its maximum opening angle. The laptops do not have a numpad despite being 16 inch models. They use a one zone RGB backlight keyboard and the layout is basically the same. And once again, I'm a bit surprised that I have to say the gaming A16 does provide a better keyboard since on the Aero it was just too mushy for me. The keyboard flex is so noticeable it distracted me when actually typing on the keyboard. It really kind, kind of felt like you're working against the flex. While both keyboards provide a key travel of 1.7 millimeters. The touchpad also seems to be identical for the two and it worked flawlessly on both machines. It felt smooth and responsive, size and position are excellent. Now, connection-wise, both laptops are identical with one exception. The Aero X16 has a USB 4 port, while the gaming A16 only supports USB 3.2 on its USB-C port. Other than that, on the left side, both have a 1 gigabit LAN port, HDMI 2.1, a USB 3.2 Type-A port, the USB-C port and the power connector. On the right side, we get two USB Type-A ports. One of them is USB 2 for whatever reason, and the other USB 3.2, as well as a 3.5 mm audio jack, and there aren't no ports at the back for both of them. The two laptops did not allow USB-C charging with my 100 watt USB-C charger. Considering especially the USB 2 port, which is basically only usable for a mouse, it's placed on the right side, so it's not an optimal port layout. The 76 watt hour batteries in both devices aren't the biggest, but surprisingly the Intel based gaming um, A16 was able to keep up with the runtimes. So the gaming A16 achieved an idle runtime of 12 hours and 25 minutes, while here the Aero X16 with the Ryzen managed slightly less with 12 hours flat. The YouTube playback times have been a bit more apart with 8 hours and 5 minutes for the gaming A16 and 7 hours and 20 minutes for the Aero 16. Gaming on battery is actually possible for both of them and the runtime highly depends on the used performance mode, if you cap the FPS or if you disable the Nvidia GPU altogether. But 1-2 to two hours on battery with playable FPS are possible for both of them. The two laptops seem to have more or less identical fan systems with identical loudness levels. But the important thing is, they are definitely beefy enough to keep the temperatures cool enough for gaming without destroying your ears. Actually, you can adjust the fan levels to a really acceptable level on balanced mode and still do proper gaming with only a bit less of performance, all things considered. And even on silent mode, some basic gaming is possible while the fans get really quiet that way. If we are taking a closer look at this for the laptop's performance and fan modes, which can be set in the Gigabyte GMate software for the benchmark of Cyberpunk 2077 at ultra settings, in the display's native 1600p resolution with DLSS on balanced, these are the results with the appropriate loudness in 50cm distance in decibel. The room temperature for my tests was around 23 degrees Celsius. Um, and for the Aero X16 using the performance mode with the fans on turbo, that resulted in 69 degrees Celsius for the GPU and only 70 degrees Celsius for the CPU with an average of 68 FPS and a loudness of 55 decibel. In balance mode, it was still 64 FPS with now much quieter 48 decibel. And on the eco mode with silent fans, I got 55 FPS at 36 decibel. And for the gaming A16, using the performance mode with turbo fans, I got higher 77 degrees Celsius for the GPU and 74 degrees Celsius for the CPU with an average of 67 FPS at a loudness of 55 decibel. So it's a bit warmer, but still absolutely acceptable. On balanced mode, it's still got playable 59 FPS with much quieter 46 decibel. And even on eco mode, it again remained playable with 56 FPS at a very quiet 36 decibel. 
Basically, that's just a whisper. Oh, and the fans turn off completely in silent mode for each of the laptops when I was watching YouTube. So overall, I would say the cooling systems are pretty good. Nothing to really criticize here. And yes, they're definitely silent enough for using them in college or libraries. I also want to mention that I didn't notice any uncomfortable hotspots on the laptops or around the keyboard while gaming. Opening up the laptops for an upgrade is pretty easy and straightforward. Releasing the screws at the bottom and carefully pry open the laptop here at the sides is absolutely doable. And here you can upgrade the RAM or install a second M.2 SSD. Now, the performance of the two, of course, depends a lot on the used CPU. While the gaming A16 is only available with the mentioned older i7-13620H, it can also be bought with an RTX 5060 or even the RTX 5050 instead. The Aero X16, on the other hand, is also available with the Ryzen AI 9 HX370. And you can configure it with the RTX 5050 and 5060 mobile as well. Since in today's tested configurations we are using the fastest GPUs available for these two, I want you to keep that in mind if you're planning on getting either of them. I didn't yet have the chance to get my hands on a 5060 mobile, but I don't think the difference will be too big. And since the 5070s in here only boost up to 85 watt with dynamic boost included, a fast RTX 4070 laptop could actually be a bit faster, but more on that in a bit. In Cinebench R23, the Gigabyte Gaming A16 with its Core i7 scored up to 15,328 in the multi-core and 1,780 in the single-core test, while the Aero X16 and its Ryzen AI7 achieved a multi-core score of up to 17,879 in the multi-core and 1,991 in the single-core test, which is a difference of 12% for the single-core and 17% for the multi-core test. In Cinebench 2024, the Gigabyte Gaming A16 with its Core i7 scored up to 862 in the multi-core and 108 in the single-core test, while the Aero and its Ryzen AI achieved a multi-core score of up to 979 in the multi-core and 118 in the single-core test. A difference of 9% for the single-core and 14% for the multi-core test. And in PC Mark 10, the Aero X16 scored up to 7853 and here the gaming A16 was noticeably slower with its 6800 points, most likely due to the lower single-core performance. Of course, both machines are in general fast enough for everything you throw at them, even 4K video editing or 3D rendering to some extent if you keep in mind the 8GB of VRAM limitation. Talking about 3D rendering, here are the Blender benchmark results for both of them. 3669 for the gaming A16 and 3868 for the Aero X16, while as you know both use the same GPU with the same wattage, so the difference will most likely be due to the RAM speed, RAM size or the CPU. And here's a quick look on several 3D mark results for both laptops, feel free to pause the video if you want to take a closer look. Now, to get an idea of what we can expect of the RTX 5070 mobile with a TDP or a TGP of up to 85W including dynamic boost, which in reality again is more like 70W most of the time really, I ran a few comparisons against an RTX 4070 laptop with a TGP of around 115W, while it doesn't gain any performance above 100W, in an MSI Sort 17, where it was paired with an Intel Core i7-14700X, which is the last 4070 laptop I had access to. But once again, it is super important to know the TGP or TDP of the mobile GPU before you buy anything. And in case of these two laptops, it is mentioned in the key feature presentation for the products on Gigabyte's website, but unfortunately it's not specified in their spec sheets. Oh, and in these tests I was using the Aero X16 for the RTX 5070 results. Overall, it seems as if the 5070 is at least providing the same or even better performance with around 15 to 30 watt less TDP, except for Forza Horizon 5. Once I can get my hands on a higher powered model, I'll do a more extended comparison, but at least it's able to keep up with a bigger and beefier RTX 4070 laptop. And last but not least, here are some benchmark results for the two tested models of today's video in a number of games and various graphic configurations. 
Assassin's Creed Shadows is just a demanding game that both laptops achieve far from 60fps on ultra settings even with DLSS and even at lower resolutions. The difference between the two laptops is marginal here, since it's mainly the GPU that is bottlenecking in this game. Only when I was testing it with high settings plus DLSS on balanced, the Aero X16 managed to get over 65 FPS. And in this case, we're seeing a difference of 14% between the two, most likely due to the CPU. Other than that, even with DLSS on balanced at the, at the lower 1200p resolution, we're only seeing around 45 FPS for both laptops. Surprisingly, in CS2 at low settings, the difference between the two was smaller at 1200p, which I double checked. But in any case, the game will be playable just fine on both systems, for sure. Considering the 165Hz screens, you could also raise the graphic details a bit if you're okay with only 165fps. In the Cyberpunk 2077 integrated benchmark, the difference was rather small at 1600p and ultra settings whether DLSS was activated or turned off. Though at 1200p with DLSS and ultra settings, the Aero X16 really left the gaming A16 behind with 97 over 79 FPS. A pretty noticeable difference of 23%. Again, I'm pretty sure that's caused by a CPU bottleneck in the gaming A16 due to the older Intel i7-13620H. And Cyberpunk 2077 is still considered a rather CPU hungry game after all. Again, in Forza Horizon 5 there was a noticeable difference between the two in both tested benchmark runs, one of them without DLSS and one with DLSS on balanced. But the game is definitely playable on ultra settings and the display's native resolution in an enjoyable way for sure on both laptops. In the Oblivion remaster at ultra settings I didn't see any difference at 1600p. Here the 5070 mobile definitely is a bottleneck despite the LSS on balanced and the game is really heavy on the GPU. But at 1200p we are already seeing a noticeable difference of 17% between the two despite the identical GPUs. For Black Myth Wukong I was using the integrated benchmark run and as you can see both laptops performed absolutely identical in all tested configurations, though for playable FPS at ultra settings and the native resolution DLSS is mandatory. By the way, with the tested settings, I didn't seem to run into VRAM issues, but that is sometimes hard to tell because in some games the first thing that happens is issues with the textures, but at least I didn't see any major stuttering or frame drops. Well, overall the Aero X16 is a bit faster, especially with lower resolutions, which isn't that big of a surprise considering it does have the better CPU, as well as two sticks of faster RAM with a higher capacity. But for my conclusion, I have to say I personally would probably prefer the gaming A16 because of the better build quality, the better keyboard and the fact that it's most likely going to be much cheaper. With the only downside being the older Intel i7-13620H which will become a bottleneck sooner than the Ryzen AI7 while it's not a bad CPU in general. And then on the other hand since we are talking about kind of gaming laptops an RTX 4070 laptop might make more sense for you because it's most likely just going to be much cheaper and probably not performing noticeably worse. That's not Gigabyte's fault though. Nvidia just isn't delivering any real benefits for the RTX 5070. The 8GB VRAM are just not good enough, again. And to be honest, I personally probably never use multi-frame gen. I'm fine with the original frame gen by two in some single player cases. Other than the mentioned issues, both laptops didn't show any deal-breaking flaws and they are solid laptops overall. And that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed the content, please make sure to like the video and or subscribe to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching, see you next time, bye bye and tschüss.